All right, we're back. We're going to be on page one of uh, Calc AB Notes 21, which is all about volume. But there's really two different concepts that we talk about when we talk about volume. One is volume with known cross sections, which is what we're going to start with. And then one is volumes of revolution, which we will get to. So let's start with known cross sections. So you can see I'm not actually on the notes. I'm on GeoGebra. Um, I'm on a file that someone else has created, uh, Steve Phelps. He creates amazing resources. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this. So we have this region in the XY plane, and that's going to be the base of a solid that we're going to make. So think of cakes, think of fancy cakes. So this is going to be the base of the solid. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a segment, in this case, perpendicular to the X axis, and we're going to pass it through the region. Now, every one of these segments is going to become some fundamental part of a 3D shape. Well, a 2D shape, but it's going to come out of the XY plane. So it's going to be kind of like in the Z direction. So what we're saying initially is that this segment is going to be the base of an isosceles right triangle. So an isosceles right triangle. So let me rotate this so that you can see what that isosceles right triangle looks like. Right? So there it is. So this is the base in the plane. And then we kind of like rotate this 90 degrees, it goes straight up in the air, and then you just connect them, you get your isosceles right triangle. Then we take the segment and we let it vary all the way through, and it's just constantly creating isosceles right triangles. So the shape remains the same, but the size of the shape is changing. And then we go all the way through. And what we want to do is we want to find the volume of the surface that this creates. Um, so I'm going to show the surface. You can see this is the shape that we get if we use isosceles right triangles. Now an isosceles right triangle I think is maybe not the most obvious choice. I think the most obvious choice may potentially, I mean it depends on, on what you think, I think is a square. So let's look at a square. I'm going to hide the surface. Okay, so the segment in the xy plane is the side of the square. So then we just build a square, kind of like coming out of your paper, with that as its side. And then we're going to vary throughout. And constantly, we are making a square. So you can see you're always going to get a square. But the size of the square changes depending on the size of the segment in the xy plane. And what we want to do is we want to figure out the volume of the solid that we form when we make this. So let me show you what that looks like. So it looked kind of like this. Um, so playing around with something like this, I think is a really good idea. Uh, we're going to switch to the notes and we'll talk about how we can find these volumes. It actually turns out to be, if you're into Riemann sums, it turns out to be a pretty straightforward thing. Um, so let's take a look at, at the notes. So think of cakes. I always think of, uh, they're, they're pretty popular now, all these shows where you're like baking cakes and they're kind of crazy shapes. That's what we're doing. So here's the concept. We have f of x and we have g of x. So f of x is the top curve here. Uh, f of x, g of x. And then uh, this region is going to be the base of essentially the cake that we're going to make. And what we want to do is we want to make a cake where all of the cross sections when we slice the cake are going to be squares. So let's think about how we could approximate the volume of that. And then we'll get the exact value. But first, let's approximate it. So the concept is we take the region, right? So essentially, we're just going from x equals negative 2 to x equals 5, which is 7 units. So I think to begin with, it makes sense to try to use 7 slices, right? So we're going to make a slice here and deal with this, slice here and deal with this, and so on, right? Eventually, we'll like have a slice here there. We're dealing with this. Let's use a right Riemann sum. So for a right Riemann sum, that means uh, we go from negative 2 to negative 1, and we just use this as the edge of the square. So what I've done is I've actually cut it up so it looks like that. Right? We went from negative 2 to negative 1. We thought, whoa, we've got this and here. Now this part right here, this is the edge of the square. So the volume of this, when I create a 3D prism out of it, is going to be whatever this is times itself, because that's how you find the area of a square, and then times 1, right? Area of the base times the height. So the area of the base 
is going to be this thing squared times this. The volume of this will be this thing squared times this. The volume of this one will be this squared times this. So that's what we want to do. Here are some pictures. Fun fact, I definitely made a GeoGebra file that created these pictures, but I cannot find it. And that's super annoying. Um, so like that's why we were looking at someone else's file for that instead of looking at my file. Uh, really, really not delightful. Um, all right, so let's see if we can do it. So what we want to do is we want to find, uh, you know, I have to find this. Then I'll have to, you know, this distance. Then I'm going to have to find this distance. Then I'm going to have to find this distance. Like, is there a way we can do this? There's definitely a way we can do this. Think about what we're doing here. So if I say that something is an X sub I, let's just say that it's a negative two plus uh, I, right? Because delta X is one, right? Because we did uh, five minus negative two is seven divided by seven to get one. So we get this. Each of these little segments here, uh, I'm gonna call them S for segment. Uh, S sub I, let's say, is the top curve. So F of X sub I minus G of X sub I. I feel like this is very Riemann sumish, right? And then what I'm doing is I'm really gonna do, I'm gonna do uh, S sub I squared, right? That's how I get a square base. I take the, uh, the side and I square it. And then I multiply by delta X. This is gonna be the volume of one little slab. So what we wanna do is we wanna approximate it. So I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use a calculator because uh, I don't wanna do this by hand. So let's see, uh, I'm gonna switch. Oh, I don't have a calculator open. Uh, here we go. All right, we're gonna switch. And we're doing a Riemann sum. Basically a lot of stuff in calculus comes back to doing Riemann sums. Uh, so I have to store F of X. So f of x is 3 halves minus x over 4. g of x is uh, x over 3 minus 7 thirds. OK, so I'm going to fill in this table here at the bottom. So, uh, And maybe I did not point that out well enough. Uh, I'm going to go back to the notes. Every Going back to the notes takes so much time. All right, I'm gonna fill in this, right? So uh, we need to figure out the side and then the volume for the first one. So this will be our first our first slice, our second slice, our third, our fourth, our fifth, our sixth, and our seventh. We're gonna find each of those, we're gonna add them up. It's an approximation of the volume that we're gonna get. All right, so let me go back to the calculator. Maybe I'll just explain what I'm doing and then, uh, I don't know, of the calculator, spit out all of them, I guess. All right, so the first side that we're gonna find is gonna be F of negative two plus one minus G of negative two plus one, right? So uh, the plus one is I because we're in the first one. So it's 53 over 12, uh, 53 over 12. And then the volume is side squared because it's a square times one. And then for two, I'm going to change this up. I'm just going to make this I. I. So I'm doing top takeaway bottom to find one segment or side. Uh, I need to do such that I is equal to, so if I do one, I get what I got. If I do two, I get 23 over six. So it's going to be 23 over six squared because it's a square and then I square it. Um, I get that. And then three, four, I'm gonna do the ones that can fit, three, four, five. So 13 over four, so it'll be 13 over four squared times one, uh, eight over three, so it's eight over three, that's the side of the square, square it, and then times one, that's the height of the prism, uh, and then we'll get uh, 25 over 12, so it's 25 over 12 squared times one, so area of the base is the segment squared and then times the height and the height is just one or delta x in this case. Um, six and seven. So three halves, 
So it'll be three halves squared times one, and then 11 twelfths, 11 twelfths, 11 twelfths squared times one. All right, so what I want to do is I want to um, create a Riemann sum that's going to approximate uh, the volume of the total thing. So I'm going to just do like uh, v, v of i maybe is going to be the quantity f of negative 2 plus i minus g of negative 2 plus i. That's, that's one side of a square. I need to square it, and then I need to multiply by 1, which is the height of all of them. Then what I think I want to do is I want to uh, I want to just write a summation. I'm going to go from one to seven because there are seven of them. V of i, and uh, I think this should work. So I get fifty nine point three oh six. I'm going to write that down in a second. Can we make this a little more general? I bet we can. Um, so let's think about think about this. So here, I have my side, but I just multiplied by one. But what I really want to multiply by is seven over n. Is you got to master Riemann sums. If you can master Riemann sums, a lot of stuff gets a lot easier. This becomes seven over n. Okay, so let me do this. What if we used like a, a hundred? And I don't know what the order of operations is here n equals 100. Well, you know what I should do is I should use 7 and just make sure this is working. 7. Yeah, 59.306. Okay, so if I use 100, I get 70-ish. If I use 200, mm, it's really narrowing in there. Uh, if I use 500, so it looks like around 70 is going to be the, the true volume. So I'm going to go back to uh, the notes and fill in some things. And then uh, Probably get, I'm just gonna like write a Riemann sum and take its limit. I think Riemann sums, every everything's a Riemann sum. Doesn't necessarily feel that way to begin with. So my overall approximation is so I'm gonna say this. So I find s sub i, which is f of x sub i minus g of x sub i, where x sub i is negative two plus i delta x and delta x was uh, five minus negative two divided by seven. And then what I did was the sum from one to seven, because we're making seven of them, of uh, s sub i squared times delta x, and I got approximately 59 point something, 59.306. Okay, so now if we want a better estimate, we just use more slices. Use more slices. And then if I want the exact value, I'm going to let the number of slices go to infinity. Go to is two words. Go to infinity. All right, so what I'm really looking at is this. I want the volume is going to be the limit as the number of slices approaches infinity of the sum from 1 to n of. So, I mean, I could write s sub i again, but I'm going to like write it out a little more explicitly. f of uh, negative 2 plus 7i over n minus g of negative 2 plus 7i over n. And so that's a side. So I want to square that times 7 over n. Right? So I'm doing the area of the side, uh, sorry, area of a cross section, which is the side squared. So that's what this is. Side squared. And then times the height. So that's all I did was uh, the area of the base is side squared times the height. And then I'm going to take the limit. So let's go back to the calculator and see. Let's see what that gives us. And then I'm going to change it into a definite integral. Um, so I want the limit. Limit as n goes to infinity of kind of this thing. But I don't want this part. That, no. 
Let's see. Okay, let's get that. 70.984988. 70.988. Almost 71. Um, all right. So if I change this into a definite integral, it's going to become the integral from negative 2 to 5 of f of x minus g of x, but I need to square that squared and then times dx, right? So it's the area of a cross section is the side squared and then delta x becomes dx when we take the limit. Um, we get this. So 70.988, 70.988. Every time I say that, it sounds weird. I'm gonna go back to the notes. I'm gonna write that and then uh, we'll call it a day on this video and we will come back and do some problems, explain a little bit more. Um, so this becomes oops, black, I think, uh, from negative two to five, f of x minus g of x squared dx, which became 70.988, I think. Let me just check that one more time. Yeah, all right. So this is the idea. Uh, you end up integrating the area of a cross section. That's it, because the height of the prism becomes dx. So uh, to find the volume with known cross sections, this is the big idea, to find the volume with known cross sections, where you're making a cake, and you're gonna slice the cake, and every time you slice it, you get the same shape. So you get a square, you get a triangle, you get a semicircle, you get whatever. Area of a cross section, you're gonna integrate the area of a cross section from where you start to where you stop. That's the total thing. It's crazy how it works out, but it works out that way. All right, so I'm gonna stop this here. I'll be back in the next one uh, and we'll keep going.